Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our uh, Tuesday morning trading room. Hang on here a second. We'll get the screen share happening. All right, the uh, market's just opening up. And uh, let's review what they've been doing here. Bear with me a moment. All right, sorry, just had a little housekeeping to do. All right, yesterday, uh, the market in a tailspin, pretty much uh, most of the session, things did settle down uh, toward the end of the day. And you can see here, just reviewing the overnight, the Asian and European sessions, we've developed a rather broad sideways trading range. It looks like we're trying to break uh, to the upside from here now. So for those of you who like your first in sync eagle signal of the day, you've got it right there. Oop, is that right? Yeah, that's right. And it looks like we're almost to our, uh, or at least halfway to our profit target on that. So a bit of a bullish start here now to the day. Uh, first micro macro cross right out of the open, a trend change signal out of the open. And here on the Raptor, a hard edge bounce right out of, out of the open as well. So a fair amount of early bullishness coming into the marketplace. got ourselves another little hard edge bounce signal forming and since this does seem to be with trend uh, if you're inclined to take some of these early signals that would be one right here as well so a bit of a follow-up signal the problem you have with these early signals is a lot of times the market is searching for direction. As you can see, we're experiencing a little bit of a pullback here now. Buyers had their their early rally and now the the sellers coming back. Sellers coming back in a big way, it seems. Price is now moving back inside that larger trading range. Looks like the the uh, bulls are getting stepped on pretty good here. Whoa! All right. Well, we had a uh, first micro macro cross lower. Um, this is a very drawn up trend change signal on the Falcon now. Uh, likewise, here on the Raptor, we're going to produce a number one signal. That's our cloud crossover signal. 
I'm going to throw a just in case order in here. Can I cover it to the crest? No, I can't. Hmm. So the market appearing very, very bearish here at the moment. How far can I cover it back? Wow, can't even do that. This, this is the problem with these huge moves. Is it sometimes makes it impossible for you to take the trade. Wow, we're getting some crazy volatility coming through here now. Oh, there's now the number one signal. And this is kind of like my just in case or my last ditch entry. What time is it? Oh dear, we're only five minutes into the day. The better place, of course, to take this number one signal was back here. It all unfolded rather quickly, though. It didn't really give me a chance to get on board, at least not with the set prices button. I don't know. This is going to be a little bit dicey off the lows of the day. Are the sellers going to manage? Where's the next, the next support zone? There seems to be a lot of early momentum, so I'm going to see whether we can stretch this one out a little bit. We're below the median line. Uh, there's a reversal signal. Uh, some some buyers pushing back. Come on, let's go for the low one more time. So a big push up now back to this little swing high. And as I mentioned here, the, here's the problem with trying to cover the markets that have moved so quickly. The proper stop is actually above the high of the day. That's the right place to, uh, to put my stop loss order. We're into the hard edge now, so this is when we anticipate some sort of reaction. Okay, producing another number one signal. Well, the buyer's just not letting it go, scoundrels. No, I'm going to find myself on the wrong side of this trade, I think.
Or if I am on the right side, I don't think I'm going to be able to hang on quite long enough. Yeah, they're going to tap me here in a second. Darn it! I can't say I'm very happy about that one. Especially since I, I think I, I'm on the right side of the trade. I think the market is probably going to try to head lower here this morning. And uh, it was just impossible to hang on to that. Well, no shortage of volatility here this morning. Given how the market is bouncing around, I think I may be inclined to maybe use a second push uh, entry. We're back near now the highs of the morning. There we go, a little, a little push through the highs. It actually, it makes sense to try a buy signal now, seeing how there wasn't much follow through on the short side. Hmm. All right, let's see whether we get a, um, a follow up signal here now. And now I've kind of faced with the same problem, but in reverse. If I wanted to buy, let's say even one of these discretionary signals, uh, where in the world do I place my stop loss order?
Okay, it looks like we're going to get a little bit of a um, pullback now, maybe back to the hard edge. The Hawk was making a macro pullback here, got spoiled by the yellow bars. Hmm, interesting, the Falcon trend line is already changing over also. I do believe we are near the primary resistance. Oh, yes, we are just a tick shy of 71.07 half. So we're seeing a little bit of a reaction to that now. quite a hard edge bounce here on the Raptor. We came up a little bit short, but given the uh, momentum, I'm going to look here now for a second push opportunity. Come on, come on back a little bit. All right, well, I'll throw one in here above the high. Cover back here to the hard edge. So it's a it's a makeshift number three. I'm trying. I'm kind of making allowances because of the uh, strong trend that we have going on here. It's always tough though when you're trying to buy a breach of the high. And I'm going to try to get a little bit back here from my earlier trade and see if we don't head up. Back to around the 7140 area, which would be more or less where we started yesterday's trading. Come on, get up there. Wow. I'm going to bring my stop up a little bit here, a little bit closer to the the hard edge. Obviously, I'm still looking for the buyers to follow through on what they started. This primary resistance line is proving to be very, very sticky.
No, now they're going to tap me the other way. Doggone it anyways. <laughs> oh, no. All right, well, it looks like we're going to get a rather deep pullback now. As the market's setting a little bit of a trading range. And I've dug a pretty nice hole for myself here out of the start. see what they come back with. Into the hard edge now on the eagle. The, uh, the raptor just keeps Flip-flopping. There's good moves both ways. But look at the churning that's going on. Okay, we got ourselves a bit of a hard edge bounce here now on the eagle and the raptor. And another cloud crossover signal. And this time I'm certainly going to make sure I take that second push opportunity. And I'm going to wait until we get above that primary resistance zone right there. There's a little bit more structure coming into the market right now. Where's the next support? Ah, down here. All right, it looks as though the market may go hunting for support before they actually try to rally again. Hmm. Maybe even a rule of three signal here on the eagle. So we've got a trend. We're starting to print signals on the other side of the band. So counter trend signals. We have had a test of the extreme. We've only had the two. Normally there's three. But what you can do is you can already uh, look to sell after the second signal providing you have seen a test of the extreme so we're getting some some conflicting signals here oh you saw the eagle flashing there just for a moment there we go so it looks like if this bar finishes lower it will produce that third signal and that will be our rule of three signal
I don't know if it's going to get all the way down here to 70, 80. We might have to look at uh, perhaps adjusting the stops a little bit. Oh, so far so good. Oh dear, do I try to run this one out a little bit further? Uh, let's take the trade to break even now. I'll hold at break even, and if I manage to ride out this swing, I'll go into my parabolic mode. And see if I can't squeak a couple of extra dollars out of this. There is, I think... No, there wasn't. I thought we may have had a, another resistance line down here around the 70, 82, 83 area, just because the way the market was reacting. Oh, but I was not able to ride out that swing, unfortunately. And here we are in limbo again. Well, here we go on the eagle again. We have now a trend change signal. It's uh, against the ATR, so the ATR not in sync with that trend change signal yet. Um, here on the Falcon, we're actually producing a late filter entry signal to buy. That could be interesting. So the signal just produced, you do have a second push opportunity here. It might actually be a better idea to buy above that little swing. Oh dear, we've got some nasty slippage going on. No, they're just... I don't like the slippage. I don't like the fact that the market is retracing all these steps. Are these same prices? All right, so where's the high of the day now? Uh, we were around 71.20. So let's see if we can not take it back to the high of the day. Well, you know what? Why don't we swing for the fences? If we're going to break the high of the day, let's see if it doesn't get back to somewhere near yesterday's high. Okay, here now that nasty primary resistance line.
and I'm going to see if we can get above there before I begin adjusting my stops. We have hit our high probability profit target and then some, so I may be acting foolishly here, trying to squeak a few extra dollars out of the trade. We could be trapping a few traders if we get above this 7107 half line. And by that, I mean there's been obvious selling back here, obvious selling right here, obvious selling going on here and here. So if the if you were selling, if you were selling here and here and here and here, where are your stop loss orders? Well, they're probably not that far away. They're probably sitting right around here somewhere. Maybe even a little tighter. So if the market gets above here, we're going to start engaging some stop loss orders, which are actually buy orders. And those buy orders could lead to a very quick move higher. Providing, of course, we can get on the other side here of 7107 half. Essentially, it's essentially 7110. That's kind of where everything is reacting at this point. <laughs> Good morning, Ted. <laughs> uh, Ted says, you're pretty brave if you tried to ride out the NASDAQ uh, in the near morning. I'll sit back and enjoy. <laughs> yeah, they're kind of thrashing me about here this morning, Ted. Got to get past that resistance zone right there. Now, you Raptor traders actually got on board a little bit earlier here with that number one signal, that cloud crossover. But, you know, again, you got to kind of take a look at the overall context. This is one of these mornings where you have to set in your mind do I think the market's more bullish or bearish? Because we've seen swings both ways. We saw an aggressive move lower out of the open, and then we saw another uh, equally aggressive move higher. So the market overall kind of balanced. And the Falcon now kind of dragging its feet a little bit. So we're gonna go through this period of contemplation where the market's thinking about, 
heading higher or perhaps heading lower. But like I said, 7108, that's the the whole the real barrier, this whole zone around the primary resistance line. Okay, big deal now for the for the bulls. We recovered ever so slightly. This is really the last chance if they can't hold this low here, this little swing low. Uh, there's a good possibility the market's going to try to drive lower and check out the bottom end again. So here now we're producing that number two signal on the Raptor. And we'll see if we get a decent second push opportunity. The second push again simply means we allow the signal to engage, we see where the market reacts, and then we use that, that bar as our signal bar. So this is a little bit of an aggressive move on my part. I should actually be waiting this out a little bit. And I should take my own advice here. What we'll do is I'll throw it on just like so, so we can watch it. What I'm thinking is the market's going to try to retest the lows, right? We're going to keep churning. We're going to keep testing the highs and the lows, the highs and the lows until we eventually see a breakout. And on this, if this bar finishes near the low, or you could bring your auto break even up, or even manually take the trade to break even at this point if you're short, there's a good chance the market will trickle down here and probably find your profit target. All right, well, let's just hold out here for a moment. <clears throat> for those of you new in the room here this morning, uh, let me just give you a really quick overview. Uh, what you're looking at is the DTS system along with the Raptor trading system. So we've, here in the top left, we have the Hawk Micro Scalper. The top right is the Falcon Swing Trader. The bottom left is the Eagle Trend Trader, and then the bottom right, of course, is the Raptor. The Raptor incorporates the programming from these other three tools, and the diversified trading system is kind of like the uh, I can't think of a good analogy, <laughs> but it has all the the tools uh, designed for their specific uh, programming to try to detect the specific uh, environments. All right, so here we go. We've encountered the hard edge of the trading band. So here on the Eagle, whenever we encounter the hard edge, we're going to anticipate some sort of reaction. We're actually getting a red bar buy signal. Depending how aggressive you want to be on this, you can see we're developing a bit of a sideways trading range, which is sort of annoying. Uh, 
Uh, the hawk already producing your first micro macro cross higher. So the hawk at least signaling a scalp opportunity. Uh, the Falcon working a possible trend change. Uh, as I said, the Eagle already with that red bar by off of the hard edge and the Raptor incorporating the hard edge from the Eagle. Also, we're going to be looking for a reaction here of some sort. So now as the Raptor Cloud's coming back in sync, we can anticipate a number one signal. So we've got our warning dot. We'll see if that sticks. quite ready. So the band, very, very neutral. We got a lot of this uh, candy striping going on in the background. Uh, again, that tells us the overall mar market context at the moment is, is quite neutral. This is when you uh, pull out the quarter and heads you buy, tails you sell. Just kidding, of course. <clears throat> Excuse me, my thought is given the, the bullishness that got us here, well, I was gonna say this is a great big bear flag, but it's, really, really getting a little bit stale at this point. The Hawk's starting to break up here a little bit. We did hit our scalp target, but not a whole lot more. The Falcon also starting to show us a lot of how the market is waffling. We're getting a lot of this back and forth. Our trend line starting to look like a, a roller coaster. Not much out of that eagle signal just yet, but uh, you know we haven't really left the the hard edge too far behind. So 
So we got a number one signal to short. I wouldn't be all that keen on it. Again, just taking the market context into account that we are sideways. That doesn't invalidate the signal, however. We did have a number two signal here. That's the counter trend signal that did trickle low enough to find the uh, profit objective. But I think a second push opportunity may be in order here, regardless of which way you're looking to take the trade. You could even do an OCO type order. So we've got a number one signal to buy and number one signal to sell. I don't know if I'd necessarily put them in all that tight, but you could look at something like that. In fact, I would probably even risk it below that swing right there. If we make another run here at this primary resistance line here at 7107 half, I'm fairly confident we'll see a break. I don't know if we have enough to get us up there though right now. Oh, there we go. Okay, so things looking a little bit more bullish now. We've got our we've got ourselves a hard edge bounce. Oops, let's get back into that trade. Got ourselves a hard edge bounce now off of the trading band right here. So things looking a little bit more bullish. Let's see, did they slip me? Oh, a little positive slippage for a change. How nice. Okay, tag that target, you stinkers. <laughs> Get up there. Now we're above the uh, the resistance line here, so I'm hoping for a little follow through. <laughs> oh no! <sighs> Tag me at break even again. We're gonna get another one of these uh, follow up signals here in a second. So now we've seen the breakout, this now the retest. Huh? Wow. Okay. I wasn't expecting them to drift quite that deep back into this trading range. That sort of invalidates the earlier breakout. All right, the hawk. First micro macro cross lower, so the hawk's going to try the bottom end. There they go. Uh, the falcon now with the trend change signal also heading lower. And here we go with the with the raptor. Let's see if we produce that number one signal to short. Okay, so there's our warning dot, our clouds crossing over. This is going to be a tough trade again because of the, just the parameters of the thing, right? I, ideally, the stop should go up there, but that's trade manager says, nope, sorry, Eric, that one's a little bit out of reach. So... You know, I could 
throw an order in halfway is keep my fingers crossed. Here now you can see we're getting the number one signal to short. But anytime you run your stops within the trading range, it always makes you a little bit more susceptible because you're reducing the probabilities of a successful trade. There is such a thing as a proper stop. Look at that. Now we're, again, back inside this trading range. So we're going to close out that order for now. Russell seems at a bit of a loss today as well, where it wants to go. Russell very content to trade between the, the highs and lows of the morning. Okay, the Falcon with a trend change now trying to get a little bit bullish. Again, you know, these are the kinds of days, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but these are the kinds of days when you look at the context, you need to exercise a little extra caution. I've been fortunate that uh, most of the trades that I, I've attempted this morning have gotten me out of break even. I did leave... You know, in hindsight, I should have taken that open profit when I had it, but oh well, <laughs> that's trading. But you can see we just keep trading signals here at the moment. There is some follow through on, on some of these signals. This number two signal, the counter trend signal. Uh, certainly had enough in it to find its profit objective. Uh, I want to treat this as a hard edge bounce, even though it's not going to tr uh, produce a number three signal. I certainly would like to consider it as such. But if they're going to head lower from here, we should be introducing another number one signal. The cloud's back in sync now, and we'll see whether we can produce a warning dot and a number one signal to sell and i may just get ready to short i'll get my stops in play no that's not what i want i want this one okay so we've got the warning dot Getting a little bit more buying, trying to come back. The 
buyers are looking back to their earlier rally and trying to figure out, hey, can we do that again? Okay, so here now the number one signal, I'm just gonna punch in with a signal. The better entry may be to actually wait for the market to take out this low. In fact, that may be where I'm going to put my break-even trigger. If the market gets down there, and like I said, given the the context of the day, this is a fairly aggressive trade on my part. And here too, the ideal stop up here. All right, let's see if we can't get this bad boy down here to the somewhere near the median line. Which is near where we started the morning. Okay, don't stop now. There you go. No! <laughs> All right, I do like this trade. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this discretionary signal right here, and I will just look to re-enter if the market trades below there. Because I missed the, the second, the follow-up signal. Did they trade below there? Maybe. Okay, they're flinching a little bit, so it gives me an opportunity to throw a trade on there now. And all I'm doing is I'm trying to continue my earlier number one signal because I got tagged out. I suppose I could just hit the sell market button. It'd be the same difference. I'm trying to get myself back in the trade that I got stopped out on. Actually, that would be the better thing to do. Let's try this again. Yep, that looks pretty good. So my initial stop was up here. Um, hopefully the market's not gonna look too far back. So I don't end up having to raise my stop up. Um, yeah, Steve says, uh, <laughs> good morning, Big E. <laughs> well, thanks, Steve. Good morning to you. Uh, he says, I love listening to you, but here's a quick report. I've really had a tough time trading over the last few days. And I know, Steve, the, the markets have not been all that cooperative. There's been some really wild swings. Uh, you guys saw yesterday. Yesterday, I got churned quite a bit too it's it's difficult it really is when you know the market 
like I say, is making these wild swings. It's not really committed. Um, I think, you know, today the error I made was trying to trade too early. You know, I, I'm not one for trading early. I'm just going to take this trade to break even now. I'm not one for those early trades. I tend to let the market settle in for a good 20 minutes, half hour, see what kind of ranges we develop. And I suppose the other thing I'm doing incorrectly right now is I'm not taking my profit when I have it. I'm trying to run out of market that's making wild swings. So, you know, there's another break even trade. So what's that now? Uh, three trades at least where I probably had $100 or more in, in profit. Yeah, way to go, Steve. Steve says here, um, I've been experimenting um, scalping with a 20 EMA, and he says it's it's been helping him. It's been profitable every day. Well, that's fantastic. When the markets are like this, like I say, you're going to do better uh, taking your profit on target. I'm holding out hope that I'm going to catch that big breakout move but um, you'll always you'll always do better when you take your profit when you have it there's nothing wrong with taking an early profit we all love to be on board these trades Right here was a rule of three signal on the eagle. We all love getting on board these trades and just watching the market go and go and go. And, you know, we get all giddy because we're making so much money on such a strong move. The problem is these moves don't happen all that often. Most of the time we are left with this kind of nonsense. And there were profitable moves in here if you took your profit on target here was a trend change signal on the eagle right so there's a trend change signal the market came down hit the profit target uh the hawk scalper you know i i almost considered just focusing on the hawk today because of all the uh scalping opportunities Here's the first micro macro cross. Here's the first micro macro cross. Here's a first micro macro cross and a macro pullback signal, kind of piggybacking on each other. Now we're going to get a first micro macro cross higher. Here are three signals just within the last uh, 20 minutes. Now, we all know that you don't need to trade a lot in order to earn a lot. In fact, that production line mentality can be a little detrimental to your trading success. But no, there's absolutely nothing wrong with, uh, with scalping, even on any of the tools. You know, you don't have to just scalp on the hawk. You can scalp. On the Raptor, you can adjust your profit target. But, uh, you know, like I said, I've had profitable trades here if I were smart enough just to take my profit on target. You know, there's one. Here was a nice little counter trend setup. There's two. Here was a quick little hard edge bounce. And there was three. It's a tough lesson to learn. 
And you can see some of us are still trying to learn it. <laughs> Steve says, I spent a year trying to avoid scalping. <laughs> I know. I hear you, Steve. <laughs> I hear you loud and clear. It's, uh, yeah, it's a funny business. What, what can I tell you? <laughs> Steve says, as to emphasize, years. <laughs> I've spent years avoiding scalping. No, it's you, you know the worst part, the or the hardest part about scalping. Not the worst part, but the hardest part about scalping is what's going on right now. So here we have another first micro macro cross, right? So let's say we set it up like this. We go in, we grab our scalp target, and then the market just keeps going and going and going. And we feel like we've, we're left out. Well, yeah, we are, but you know, it's kind of the bird in the hand scenario. You gotta look at what you were able to do. Yeah, see, Ted says, this is why I only scalp. You're, you skew your probabilities when you have a tighter profit target. You know, I, I mentioned this again, uh, but for the benefit of the, the new people in the trading room, we've all seen those emails. New trading system performs 93.7% of the time. 93.7% you know, win ratio. I, I even saw one the other day. I should have saved it. Uh, they were boasting a 99% win ratio. Well, a 99% win ratio is not that difficult to get. In fact, I can tell you right now how you can have a 98.5% winning system on the E-mini S&P. And no, I'm not making it up. But if you want to be right, 985 percent percent of the time trading the e-mini S&P trade for one tick. That's right. Almost 99% of the time, the e-mini will move at least one tick in your favor. I don't care what you use for an entry signal. 99% of the time, the e-mini will move one tick in your favor. Okay, big deal. That's 12.50. Uh, you're going to owe at least 3 or $4 for commissions. You're going to owe at least another 4 or 5 bucks for fees. So what does that leave you with? Uh, 250 Enough for a cup of coffee? No, not even that. <laughs> not at the Starbucks anyways. So that kind of leaves us with a little bit of a dilemma. But my point is that if you want a higher win ratio, it's not difficult to do. You just have to have a, a relatively tight profit target and a relatively loose stop. Now, to most people, this looks like a very backwards trade. A couple of things to keep in mind. The risk is capped at 2% of my trading capital. So even if this trade goes south, I'm not going to wipe myself out. Now, this may or may not be represent 2% of your capital. And yours might be more, yours might be less. But what this allows me to do is it allows me to correctly capitalize on this position. So rather than just take a single contract, the trade manager is telling me, Eric, for this trade, you can afford two contracts so you can make $100. By setting up the trade this way, I improve my probabilities of success. 
the trade manager or the uh, DTS and the Raptor systems are both very good at picking up immediate momentum, but sometimes the, the momentum will look back a little bit. So here's another first micro macro cross on the Hawk, a very high probability signal. But the temptation for most people is to set it up like this and throw their stop loss right above the high because they say, oh, I don't want to lose any money. But look at what happens. You can't see that, but that's actually $440 and eight contracts because, again, we're capping our risk, right? So we're really maximizing our earnings. If this works out, we've made $400 on the trade and we would have a one-to-one -one, uh, reward to risk ratio. And a lot of traders will tell you, well, that's the absolute minimum that you should trade for. But here's the problem. The market brings you in and then tags you out before you realize a profit. And yet the trade was a profitable trade, wasn't it? So what you need to do is you need to leave yourself a reasonable stop. And usually I look two swings back. You need to control your risk. And ideally you'll take your profit on target. So even though you may start with a, a rather large stop, obviously that doesn't mean that stop has to stay there. When this market makes this swing at this point, I would probably bring my stop in around here. So now rather than risking $260 on the trade, I'm effectively risking about 130 or 1% of my trading capital. You will not go broke, or at least not broke very quickly, risking 1% of your trading capital. And then as the trade progresses lower still, I get another little swing. I got my break even trigger and boom, all of a sudden I'm down here. If, if the trade reverses at this point, okay, I am out with the break even stop. Otherwise I go on to hit my profit target. So if you want to improve your, your odds as a trader, Two things, three things you need to do. Um, one, leave yourself a reasonable stop. Two, um, take profit on target. And three, capitalize your positions correctly. Yeah, way to go, Steve. Steve says, uh, today I had a couple of break-evens, and then the third trade made a nice profit. Well done. Good job. And, you know, I think part of what adds to the frustration of trading is that those trending days, they crop up maybe once a week, once every couple of weeks, <laughs> just enough to hold out hope that every day can be a trending day. And of course, every day is not a trending day. It's like golf. I swear they make the 18th hole of, for those of you who are golfers, you'll, you'll get this analogy. But I think they make the 18th hole on the golf course one of the easiest holes to play because they want you coming back, <laughs> right? They want you to finish on a high note. They want you to think that, hey, that, that wasn't such a bad four hours. <laughs> and yet when you get back to the clubhouse, you think, oh, my goodness, I had a terrible hole there. I had a terrible hole here. And so on it goes. And like I say, in I should have been a little bit more prudent today myself and uh, and taking more profit on target when I had it. But that's the joys of being a trading room moderator is you guys get to see when I do something, um, shall we say boneheaded, when you guys do something <laughs> that you shouldn't have done, well, you don't have too many witnesses.
Yeah, I'm kicking myself because had I taken uh, my profit when I had it, I would have dug myself out of my hole already. But oh well, it happens. Okay. Let's see where we're at. It looks as though we're almost back into a downtrend now. We've had a few decent sell signals here. And of course, if you believe the market is, is trending, you should avoid the counter trend signals unless you have the strongest uh, setup for a counter trend. Oh, here we go. We're back to the low of the morning, which was, well, my target was here, the median line. And let's see if we get a little bit of a pushback from there. Honestly, I find some of these large ranging days uh, the most difficult to trade. Those smaller, slower days where the market just seems to plod along. I actually find those a little bit easier to trade. You seem to have a lot of time to think about what's developing. The market doesn't do anything too crazy. Okay, we're coming back now into the hard edge. This is normally where we anticipate a reaction. Uh, we are back to the lows of the day, so everything's looking a little bit more a little bit more uh, neutral again. If the buyers are going to recover, they're going to try to do it off the low of the day because, of course, that's where the rally this morning started, right down here. This is where we're at. This whole 70, 75 zone, that's where they took off before.
Okay, and now our band getting a little bit more bullish. So the Hawk Scalper again with those early signals. Okay, this is going to be now what we refer to as an early cloud crossover. We're getting the warning dots. This will not print as a number one signal because the cloud's not fully crossed. But we have the makings of a number one signal, hence the early number one signal. Can I risk it down there? Dot got it. All right, I'm going to have to try to risk it about half ways. And we'll see if we get some follow through off this one now as the buyers try to recover. and see whether or not they can resume their earlier trend. They're thinking about it. Here we go. Things slowing considerably as we get closer toward the, the lunch hour break. Come on, there we go. Here we'll move the market a little higher now with the mouse. Just give it a good little push up. Come on, get going, get up there. All 
Uh, now that the clouds are fully crossed, the next buy signal will produce a number one signal. So I'll be on the lookout for that, a little confirmation of the early number one signal that we have. Um, I think we're going to button up the room here in a few moments. So I will, for a change, I guess I will try to take profit on target. Um, but you can see the momentum really, really starting to wane. As the market struggles for direction. Let's see if I can't get that trade to break even. All right, everyone. Um, well, I will see you again tomorrow, uh, and hopefully the market will settle down a little bit. I don't mind the volatility, but this back and forth nonsense, that's getting to be a little bit too much. <laughs> I'm going to register my complaint. All right. I will talk to you tomorrow then. Bye for now.